welcome back everyone to another video and this one we'll be taking a look at this DC to DC converter now the main purpose that I got this from Amazon was to use uh, as a charging station and it would have then had the input connected to my solar panel but uh, the rain gods were a bit too merciful today and we had an overcast and a lot of rain so I didn't really get the chance to test it out but I have now connected it to a 5 amp 12 volt power supply and from there we can actually go ahead and test this out now uh, this blue one would be replacing uh, this green one and we'll get to the details in a moment so what we're going to do is simply try and charge my phone it's at around 19% uh, now and uh, charging phones is what I really wanted to use this for now we'll also try uh, and see how the Raspberry Pi reacts to it uh, and boot this up probably but mostly I really wanted to charge my phones and my power bank so that at least I can have some stuff uh, completely running on solar now uh, we won't be too scientific and go ahead for this simple uh, charger doctor and uh, you know get with it so uh, on the side of things why I wanted to change uh, this to the newer one is because this is advertised as a 3 amp uh, 5 volts DC to DC regulator so it converts 12 volts to 5 volts and has a maximum uh, current uh, rating of around 3 amps now uh, that is good on paper and also more than enough to charge a phone it has a single USB port and 5 volt output uh, connectors but uh, the issue is that it is running an LM2576 uh, Texas Instruments uh, a switch mode uh, DC to DC regulator and one of the issues I have with this is this chip by itself is rated at uh, 3 amps so that means that uh, the specification is based on this chip and not on the whole design uh, and the chip specification can really vary especially with thermals and there is no real uh, you know uh, attention given to thermals just solder down to PCB and not uh, like not really flown well with the PCB at all uh, so this chip actually ends up giving way less and I've had uh, issues even running Raspberry Pi on it and my phone charges extremely slow apart from other things this uh, chip has a internal uh, frequency switching frequency of around 52 kilohertz and uh, which is okay but uh, more is better so now comes this chip uh, this is based on a Texas Instruments again uh, but this one is a TPS 457 it has an internal switching frequency of around 1 megahertz uh, up to 1 megahertz and it can and it can easily deliver up to 20 amps now as I said this was a 6 amp module so that means that whatever testing would have done whatever specifications uh, they would have been uh, are based on this module itself and not directly on the chip so I am expecting it to get a bit more close to 6 amps uh, than this would this would get to uh, 3 amps so again and all, apart from all of that it has some safety features like uh, thermal shutdown and all of that fancy stuff so that's good too but uh, let's finally go into the uh, you know charging bit and see how it performs so for that I'll be using an anchor cable just to uh, you know eliminate every uh, and all uh, sort of issues relating to bad USB cables uh, now the charger doctor isn't the most sophisticated method of testing this but it's really hard to uh, test the current rating over USB so we are just going to uh, resolve to that I hope you can see but I'll be calling out the uh, read outs and we'll see how that goes so it's at uh, 0 0.01 amps uh, again there's no load on it and I've plugged it in my phone is charging I mean, it's showing the charging symbol we have dropped to uh, 0 0.49 volts and 0 0.74 amps uh, and uh, 
this seems normal the charging rate will increase shortly but i really want to see it go up to an amp or so and it just declined so we'll actually wait for things to settle down and for my phone to actually uh, get charging it's at 18 percent now so it dropped down from 19 to 18 before i put it up to charge and then i guess we'll just wait so the 30 minutes mark is now coming up and we are at around 40 percent so that's a 20 percent increase in the last 30 minutes um, and uh, according to my phone uh, the charging will complete in one hour and 30 minutes which is extremely good considering this is not a quick charge uh, device now in quick, quick charge i can go from 18% uh, to 90 or 100 in uh, one, uh, one and a half hour but uh, for a non quick charge device this is actually pretty good now previously yes the uh, initial charging stage is pretty slow uh, now uh, mobile phone charging has uh, a pretty obvious curve when it comes uh, to charging their batteries uh, and that means that the first 10 minutes when I had it uh, charging it just charged around 2% so it took uh, 10 minutes to go from uh, 18 to 20 and then uh, another uh, 20 minutes to go from 20 to 40 so that's a pretty uh, darn good uh, charging speed now I just wanted to see if the that charging curve sort of resets uh, or we are actually uh, getting uh, some de decent amp uh, out of this uh, DC to DC converter uh, because at this rate I think it's a pretty good uh, device to have with my solar panel and I can finally get stuff to charge so yes it is it's just straight jumps up to 1.1 amp uh, which is amazing there was just uh, an initial jump there I think it has settled down again but uh, I think we'll see the one uh, amp mark uh, anytime soon so yes there is a charging curve it takes some time to reach around uh, one amp uh, of uh, charging uh, current and but uh, that being said uh, what I want to do is go ahead and boot up the Raspberry Pi on it now I do uh, I'm not planning on getting any sort of output just wanted to uh, see if it boots fine so there's a nothing else connected to the Raspberry Pi apart from the UART uh, and I'll be monitoring it uh, and again as you can see it just uh, touched the one amp mark uh, I think I disrupted the connection somehow but uh, it was just there uh, but I think I'll just leave it down there alright so let's take it out of here and plug it into the Raspberry Pi 3 now the Raspberry Pi 3 takes uh, a pretty good amount of current while booting up so let's just see if uh, gets any load on there so on the Raspberry Pi side of things it doesn't seem to have any issues but it's not really drawing a lot of current at the boot stage around 0.4 amps 0.3 amps and it seems to have booted up pretty nicely there so yes uh, I don't think running a Raspberry Pi off of this will be uh, an issue although I would like to try out a few other boards in the future so uh, that was about it it's a nice little product and seems to be working fine uh, I'm really happy to see the results with my uh, smartphone charging up uh, quickly and I think this would be a permanent installation so one of the things that I uh, don't necessarily like about this is that the uh, positive and the negative connectors are a bit too uh, near each other and even the uh, out uh, positive connector is again a bit too close to the uh, input one and the ground uh, they should have been a bit more far away but then again uh, we are we aren't uh, we are not dealing with very high voltages so this is a niche product and um, and this is about it thank you so much for watching this video uh, if you like this uh, short 
you know review kind of a thing on this DC to DC converter uh, hit the like button and the links for to buy this will be in the description down below thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one